What's happening guys, I'm from TechSource. Welcome to Setup Wars episode 166. I might as well call this the ultimate edition because we have some pretty sick setups in this episode. So yeah, if you guys wanna participate, make sure to watch the video link down below. But with that said, let the Setup Wars begin. Make your devices stand out by skinning them. Skinit offers a wide variety of awesome skins to protect and cover up your boring tech. I'm actually using the Deadpool skin for my PS4 Pro and it looks really dope. It's super easy to apply and the quality of the skins are great. Skinit also offers various case types for iPhones, Samsung phones and more, but the coolest thing in my opinion is that you can create your own custom design by uploading a photo. It could be for skins, cases, and even Apple Watch bands. So check them out by clicking on the link below. And just for my subscribers, you guys get 25% off your order. Kicking off the episode is Andre from Montreal and his productivity setup for software development. We have an ultra-wide monitor from Dell that's mounted on the IKEA Saljan countertop with two Alex drawers as support. The countertop actually looks pretty dope with that texture. It's the first time I'm seeing this on the show. Andre did keep the surface fairly minimalistic. He's using the Drevo Caliber wireless keyboard with the MX Master 2S mouse. This setup is actually being powered by his 2017 MacBook Pro, which is held up by the Rain Design Stand. Although the USB-C hub sticking out of the side kind of looks out of place, and it's kind of dumb that they made the cable so short like that. Some of the miscellaneous things he has on his desk are his plant, his lamp, and a pair of Logitech MX sound speakers. Even the cables are managed neatly. The wires are routed behind the monitor mount and into the Signum rack underneath his desk. A very simple yet productive setup. Thank you, Andre, for entering. Next up is Benjamin from Las Vegas and his insane gaming room. We got lots of shelves filled with rare collectibles and tons of Lego action figures. And on the other side, we got a beautiful multi-purpose triple monitor setup. He uses this for gaming, photo editing, and watching content. So we got three Samsung 4K monitors mounted against the wall with the cables being routed through the wall. And you guys might be wondering, where the hell is the PC? I'll show you guys soon, but try and figure out until then. So the desk is really nice. He's using the IKEA Barca Boda countertop, which I think looks really cool with that arrow style texture. He's also installed a few capital legs to add some space between the tabletop and the Alex drawers. And it looks like he used that space to store a few things. Ben also kept the surface of his desk fairly clean and symmetrical. We got the Logitech 5.0 speakers, which are spread out perfectly, and his Man War headset, which offsets that giant Jim Raynor from StarCraft collectible on the other side. In the center, we got the Razer Huntsman Elite Keyboard, the Orb Weaver Chroma Keypad, and the Mamba Mouse on top of the Firefly Mouse Pad. Beautiful work routing all those cables through the desk and behind the Alex drawer. And finally, in case you guys haven't guessed already, the PC powering it all is actually mounted on the wall right beside his setup. It's a custom water-cooled build rocking the Ryzen 7 1700X. We got 32 gigs of RAM and the Aura's GTX 1080 Ti Extreme. It looks like he was going for a black and green build, but the lighting from the fans kind of throw off the color consistency a little bit. Not only does the setup have lots of personality, but it also has purpose. I really like the symmetry and the cable management with the wall-mounted PC. I think this setup looks really clean. Lots of thought and time went into all this, and for all those reasons, I don't see why he doesn't deserve a seal of approval. So congrats, Benjamin, on winning the 16th seal of approval. Damn, it's been a while since I've awarded one of those. I think the last person that got one was last year or something. But anyways, the seal of approval is a custom-made plaque given to someone with a setup that meets all my criteria. So Ben, if you're watching this video and you want to claim your beautiful custom-made plaque, toss me an email at setupwars at gmail.com. Congratulations, well-deserved. At number three, we have a very unique setup by Janice from Germany, who is only 17 years old. So check this out. This is a custom-made desk that he 3D modeled and built himself. Inside it, we have a custom water-cooled PC with a deleted 7700K that's overclocked to 5 gigahertz. We got a GTX 1080 Founders Edition and a 16 terabyte NAS system from Western Digital. Now the cool part isn't even the desk itself, but how he modded some parts of the desk. There's a huge mod list, so I'll just go over some of the cool ones that I found. For starters, he installed a fan controller in the middle of the desk, which he can use to control the speed of the fans, including his power supply fan. He also installed a bunch of stuff on the slope of the desk, including a docking station, a GoPro charger, we got a fingerprint sensor as well, and near the bottom, he installed a built-in USB hub, and some buttons on the other side, which I'm assuming is for powering on the system or resetting it. 
He even custom made two separate displays that he mounted on the wall. So the left side is actually a display of his previous rat gaming mice, which I think it's five, seven, and eight. And then on the other side is the leftover parts of his GPU after water cooling it. You know, it's the little things like these that set this apart from the rest of the modded PC desks I have seen on the show. This whole setup is built for gaming and video editing, which I feel is a bit overkill for just a single monitor. I would have thrown in at least one more in there, maybe even go ultra right at this point. The keyboard and mouse are both from MSI, and it looks like the wires are routed through the desk and hidden behind it. Very clean cable work. I gotta say though, if you're not trolling me and you really are 17 years old and you designed and built this whole setup just by yourself, then my friend, you are going places. Uh, just keep it up, follow your passion, and most importantly, stay motivated and you will be successful. I mean, when I was 17 years old, I was fapping daily and playing Warcraft 3. I mean, this guy has a bright future ahead of him. Thank you, Janice, for entering. My man John coming in hard at number four with his ridiculous boner-inducing gaming room. I'm sure we have all seen this setup everywhere online, so it was a matter of time before he finally got featured on Setup Wars. So thank you, John, for submitting your photos. I don't even know where to begin, but we can all agree that the nanoleaf panels are the first thing we noticed. This setup has 62 nanoleaf panels and 18 canvas panels off to the left side. Jesus. I personally think this room doesn't even need an actual light source. Like, he can light up the entire room with just the panels and three of his LifeX strips behind the desk. Okay, so he's got three 27-inch monitors mounted against the wall, and we have a 55-inch TV up top as an overhead. Below that, we got the Corsair K70 MK2 Special Edition keyboard, which is actually the one I'm using for my own setup. And we got this Scimitar Pro gaming mouse with the Goliathus extended mouse pad. It's tricky when you have a large RGB mouse pad because you're not able to route the cable together with the keyboard wire. So instead, you have two different cables going across the desk, which doesn't look as clean. I feel like another solution to this, other than drilling two holes in the desk, is by tucking the mouse pad cable underneath the mouse pad and routing it towards the keyboard and then routing them across the desk using Velcro or zip tie, for example, to keep them grouped up. The cable is pretty thin, so it won't be that noticeable underneath the black mouse pad. The rest of the cables are routed neatly underneath the desk using raceways, no complaints here. He does have a headset, that's the Corsair Wireless Void Pro, which is resting on the Corsair ST100 stand. And you can kind of see his PS4 Pro tucked away behind the monitors. The PC powering it all has a 7700K that's overclocked to 4.8 gigahertz. We got 32 gigs of RAM and the Star Wars Jedi Order Titan XP. I gotta say, I love that he sleeved the AIO in two different colors. That's actually pretty clever. I also noticed that there isn't a consistent color scheme going on, which actually works well with the setup because John is able to change it up whenever he gets too bored. He can change up the wallpapers and the color scheme to match it whenever he wants. You know, the setup might seem a bit too cramped for some people because he does have a lot of collectibles and they are pretty big too, so it does take up a lot of space. I mean, he's got two full shelves of them and more on the bottom left side. The setup's purpose is primarily for gaming, but he does watch movies and sometimes stream as well. But regardless, I think we can all agree that it's a badass gaming room with lots of personality and customization. Excellent work and thank you, John, for entering. Wrapping up the episode is Wesley and his super clean Stormtrooper themed setup. Now, I know it's not a big deal for a lot of people, but the desk not being centered with the monitors and the TV is kind of driving me insane, to be honest. My guess is that he mounted both monitors and the TV first, since it's kind of centered with the wall, and then he realized that the desk couldn't be centered because there wouldn't be enough space for the drawer to hold his PC. And that's another thing, he put the PC on the left side, which kind of defeats the purpose of having a side panel. Now he's not able to look inside his PC. I would probably remove that caution sticker off of it as well when you get a chance to, but I mean, either way, you can't really see it from this angle. So he's got two 24 inch curved monitors stacked under a 4K TV from LG. And under that, we got pretty much everything else. We got the Corsair K70 RGB rapid fire keyboard and the M65 Pro mouse. It looks like he doesn't use any headphones, just the episode 2.1 active soundbar system. So the IKEA Mickey desk comes with a dedicated rack for cable management and two drawers for storage, which makes it a great desk for setups. But I feel like it's not being utilized well here. A few minor tweaks, like repositioning a few things, would improve this setup greatly. This is why I strongly recommend measuring things before buying furniture and just planning your setup before you start putting things together to make sure it comes out the way you want it. But anyways, that's it for this episode. As always, make sure you guys drop your comments below and vote on who has the best setup 
in this episode. It's going to be a tough decision. I'll announce the winners on my Instagram page if you guys want to follow me there. Drop a like if you guys enjoyed the show. As always, I love your faces and I will see you in the next one, which is probably Friday.